Welcome back. I am not in Alabama. I'm in South Florida, in the great South Florida Food Forest Project. And I am making a little outdoor biochar here. This is coconut biochar. And I know this looks really dangerous, right? I mean, you know that if you put a coconut into a fire, it's like a bomb. These coconuts are really old and dry inside. And I shook them first to make sure that they didn't have any milk in them. And the ones that I was suspicious of, I put splits in. You don't want them going off like bombs, particularly inside of the city. Fire and explosions is like generally frowned upon inside of metropolitan areas. And we are definitely in the city here. So this char from all these old dried up coconuts that didn't get harvested in time and then it's been really dry down here. This is gonna go and get spread around the food forest right here. As you can see from the tree where I got these, there are new coconuts that are coming along. And when it starts raining, usually in June here in South Florida, when it starts raining, all that stuff's gonna grow a lot faster. Right now it's still pretty dry. And one of my uh, nephews asked, why are you lighting a fire right now? It's hot. And I said, I'm doing it for the plants, which is pretty much my answer to everything. So it's been about 10 years since all this was put in and it's, it's looking nice. You can see the, uh, this Moringa tree has been here probably seven years and we keep cutting it back over and over again. And it's funny because this area here and that mango behind it, you remember in that video previously, I cut the whole center out of that mango and it was really, it was almost twice this height. And you know, for those people that are afraid to prune, come on, stop it, knock it off. There's mangoes on this thing, same year that I pruned it, no problem. Look, I mean, come on, I didn't cut the whole tree off, I cut a third of it off and we're still gonna get plenty of mangoes and we're also gonna dodge the power line because there's power lines up there. You don't wanna hit that. But because this tree was getting so tall and this moringa was so tall, behind me here is a avocado which has moved over this way. So none of the branches are coming this way. Like I would like to see you know, a branch coming out like right through here, but instead the whole tree is kind of leaned away this way. And this branch, even worse, one of the kids was climbing on it and broke a branch off right here, which has made a really nasty split. And so I'm gonna have to saw this one off too, probably because I don't think it's gonna heal. I need to get a good one. But I did see a little sign of hope here. This is a little branch that's coming here. So hopefully no other kids climb on it and knock that one off. Because if I could direct that there, it would be kind of cool. It would sort of fill in the space. I mean, you almost, almost want to saw the tree back to here and just sort of start over with it. But there are some years in this avocado and I really, really want it to bloom. And so I don't want to prune it that much. That will be uh, a little bit of a problem, you know, so we'll come through here and see what the rest of this looks like. A little key lime right here, which is still clicking along. This key lime has never gotten bigger than a bush and it's never looked particularly great but it's always born key limes. There's always enough key limes to make key lime pie with every year, which is really the point of a key lime tree. The uh, carambola, the star fruit here, past its, past its big season. Uh, this again is a dry season. When the rains come in, it's really gonna go. But you can see there are blooms and the blooms are looking very pretty. I like the way they come out in these strange clusters, a lot like its cousin, the Balimbi these neat little clusters of blooms coming right out of the, the sides here. And I have seen star fruit where you, you cut it back severely and it fruits again right away. So that's not a problem. You can tell there have been kids in here. Look at this, this is kind of weird. I don't even, I don't even know who thinks, let's stick a little crab sticker on the star fruit. I guess Chiquita does it with bananas, so. All this stuff, I cut down mango in here and my mom let a lot of the leaves rot off of the mango and fall onto the ground and she let some of the branches stay. And then our friend Eric had a friend drop off a whole ton of mulch, literally. And so the mulch is being spread around, which is gonna help. This is not really the best season to be mulching. 
You should really mulch when it's wet, not when it's dry. But some mulch is better than no mulch. You gotta take it when you can get it. Mulberries are coming in. The kids and I have already picked this tree out for now. So you don't really see any black ones left. But this tree, again, remember I cut this whole center of it out. You could see how it was chopped right here. It was getting too tall. It was getting up close to the power line. And we chopped it out, it made a bunch of branches. And then just some months later, there it goes. It's fruiting again. No big deal. Mulberries are really, really tolerant of pruning, usually. I have heard that black mulberry has some issues with uh, sometimes bleeding and bleeding and not healing, but never been the case. Any mulberry I've ever pruned has done fantastic. We've got the Suriname cherry. The Suriname cherry's working on making little cherries right now. I actually haven't gotten to eat cherries off this one yet because I've never been here when it's fruiting. I'm always there when it's blooming or after it's already fruited. But it is making little, cool little fruits. They used to use these as hedges all over. They called them cherry hedges. There's a few fruit on here, but they're dry. Not looking good right now. Hot and dry. Show you the other mulberry here. This guy. You can see this tree was huge. I chopped it all up on film. And now look at it growing back. It's like this great big beautiful bush. And it's already born some fruit, I was told. But too early for me, I missed it. Sixth Street Mulberry from the Edible Plant Project. The uh, cherry that we planted last time is doing great. See, it's got the tithonia around it, our chop and drop tithonia. It's dry. It's getting water. I mean, my mom is putting the sprinkler out here, but this sand is just, it's like desert sand. It does not hold the water very long, but this thing is making a lot of fruit. It doesn't even care. It's happy, which is pretty cool. This is from one of the banana roots and stumps that I dug out of the trash. <laughs> I, I took the neighbor's uh, yard waste bins and dumped them all over back here and one of them had a mess in it of banana pieces. So that right there got planted and that little big, well it was a big hunk of root underneath the ground has now split. And it looks like the fire is trying to spread into our mulch here. See this is the sort of thing when you're in the city, they hate this sort of thing. They hate fun in the city. So we're gonna have to stop the fun. We'll have to stop the fun for the avocado too. Gotta watch it. Nobody wants you to have any fun in the city. It's not like the country. You could just have raging fires in your yard and people are like, ah, they're just doing a little clearing. No big deal, no big deal. Just a little conflagration over there. Let's go around and look at a couple of the trees because there's some cool stuff going on. This is the chocolate pudding fruit, Black Sapote, Dyspyrus nigra, which I planted some years ago. And it is the prettiest tree. It's kind of had to be pruned at a, sort of like a wall, so it doesn't go too far into the neighbor's yard and it doesn't go into the power line. But it, it's gorgeous. This is the prettiest tree. And it was such a sad looking little tree when we put it in. It was not happy when dad and I found it, but it was the only one we could get at the time. And man, I don't know why somebody wouldn't plant this thing just as an ornamental. I mean, even if you didn't eat the fruit, it's so pretty. Very nice tree and it's, it's blooming right now. And actually you could see the blooms are very similar to persimmon blooms. It's related to persimmon. See that? Very similar shape. Often your blooms are a good indicator on what type of a, you know, what tree family you have. You can kind of tell what family it's in by the way the blooms look. Over here, this is cool. Malabar chestnut. This Malabar chestnut was like, I planted it some years ago and I didn't think it lived. And then I, I came back here and my mom said, what is that thing that's growing there? Is that another Shephalera? And I was like, yeah, it looks like a Shephalera. And I realized, no, that's the, I planted a Malabar chestnut in there like five years ago and I, I just stuck seeds around. And this one lived. So it's, that's, that's a pretty tree. 
Now it can get like 80 feet tall. Um, we saw one at the park, and I said, oh, look at that, Mom, it's a Malabar chestnut. And she goes, but don't, Mom, Mom's ho hopefully not watching this video. We'll keep it under control, it's no big deal. So everything's under control, it's fine. It's fine, it'll be fine. Okay, come on around the front. Tropical almond looking good. Little teeny baby when I planted it. Now it's a monster. Gorgeous tree. That tree. I mean, this is one of the prettiest trees. I cut it back some because we didn't want to cause the neighbor trouble. It's dropping nuts and leaves and stuff over in his yard and it was kind of leaning sideways so I moved it a little bit there. This Acerola cherry right here, I planted this thing. Um, I planted an Acerola here with my dad some years ago and then it got knocked over in the storm and then it ended up getting a rot issue and it died and then they dug it up, planted another one and then an entire load of mulch got dumped on it. This one, and mom had to dig it out, but it's still alive. When, it, when she dug it out, it had nothing on it. Uh, no leaves at all, uh, but it's growing back. So hopefully, hopefully the second tree is going to do okay. But that's, that's, not, that's not good. Obviously you don't want a load of mulch dumped on top of your acerola cherry tree. Uh, come around here, we'll see something cool. This is just the landscaping. My dad was into landscaping, so he put all kinds of bits and pieces, trees in here, and then this beautiful Brazilian pepper, one of the classic landscape trees of South Florida. But this tree right here, this was a little bitty stick. Can you see this? Look at this tamarind. This tree was like an inch around and four foot tall when I planted it. The cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. And now it is beautiful. And not only is it beautiful, it is bearing tamarind. And you can tell when they're ready because they crack. They look crack. Now if you squeeze it and it doesn't crack, it's no good. This is a sweet tamarind. A lot of the tamarinds we had in the Caribbean were sour ones. They were often used for seasoning or you'd have to add a lot of sugar to them. But these guys, these guys are sweet right off the tree like a fruit. I mean, it tastes like a, like a gummy candy. I have very pretty seeds inside. So the kids have, uh, my nieces and nephews and my children have been uh, picking and enjoying them. Found a few of them on the ground ripe when I first got here and went, oh man, this tree is actually producing. This is fantastic. So. They've, uh, they've been very popular and all the ones within like child reaching distance are gone. And I think most of the ones within stick hitting distance are gone now too. <laughs> Let's go check on the fire in case we're burning the backyard down. That's cool, isn't it? That's mostly charcoal now. It's really all about timing. You get the timing right, when you put it out, get the charcoal. Okay, so that one's, most these are ready. They're smashing up pretty good. Look at that, now they bust to pieces. No, it's only the last few that aren't. Okay, cool.
some of them aren't done. I can set them aside. A lot of them are done. Also managed to burn a whole bunch of bougainvillea pruning. So it's pruning the bougainvillea head. Threw a bunch of those in there. That one's not done. That guy, that's all, that's all char there. You can't even tell it's a coconut. It was a coconut. Look at that, that is cool. They just smash up. The first time I really made char out of uh, falling coconuts, usually it's too dangerous. Hey, that one's got some meat in it. Roast that. Already roast. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So this little system here, this is just a small yard, but this food forest system is not nearly as productive as you could make it. It already brings in a few hundred pounds of coconuts and star fruit and quite a few mulberries and there's yams. Right now the yams are all asleep because it's that season. Chocolate pudding fruit, and tamarind, key limes. There's moringa in here and katuk. There's been some bananas coming in and out. But if, if this was really pushed, like if you really worked on the ground cover layer, put in uh, seminal, seminal pumpkins and sweet potatoes and things like that all over it and really built the soil up, you could do a ton more. But just this basic system of trees, which doesn't take a lot of maintenance, is quite productive and has remained alive under harsh conditions. I was talking with the neighbor next door about grass and how hard it is to maintain grass down here yesterday because he has to put in a lawn. By code, he had a new driveway put in and he has to put in a lawn. And I'm saying, you know, this is this area, South Florida, is supposed to be a forest. It's not a grass area. And if you if you go with the forest first, then you can build all around the edges of it. You can grow so much food if you work on the the, the vines and the the palm layers and you put lots of little understory plants. You can even plant coffee and other stuff down here that's just unbelievable. My friend Eric's got cocoa growing in his backyard. Uh, gingers underneath. Tons and tons and tons of stuff. And this is just this is just a simple piece of it, but it could be pushed much, much further. And I mean if you if you have a little piece of warm Florida, I would definitely do a Florida food forest. And I'll, I'll put a link to my book, Create Your Own Florida Food Forest, in the description of this video. Thanks for joining me. Looks like I've got some pretty good char right here that I can now turn around and spread. Pretty neat. Catch you all next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be black. Bury my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again on a fruit salad spoon. Cool.